Yeah, we're at the track covering the sport of kings coming up in this week's show. A 1-2 finish in Jamaica's Gold Cup for champion trainer Jason Da Costa with Mute Mile qualification for the winner. The weekend at Kimanis Park also served up other exciting events together with the ongoing riveting jockeys title race between Tevin Foster and Radish Roman, both surging past the 100 mark this season. A century down stakes win in Canada for top Jamaican jockey Dane Nelson and a stirring finish to Europe's richest horse race, the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe in Paris, France. Plus the usual update on the number of Caribbean wins on the North American continent. We're kicking things off in Jamaica. Where the main event Saturday was the 51st Gold Cup, honoring Hall of Fame 14-time champion trainer Philip Fiani, who has a record 11 Gold Cup wins, including five in a row from 2000 to 2004. Champion trainer Jason Da Costa with a strong hand in the race, with four starters, including the top two in the betting, the three-year-old Colt, Fun Can't Done, with Robert Halladine aboard, and leading jock Tevin Foster's mount. Is that a fact for the seven furlong run? The morning line favorite Desert of Malibu scratched, leaving nine runners for this Mute Mile qualifier, holding win and urine status for December's record 250,000 US dollar Mute purse. Number four, Fun Can't Done, the favorite at three to two. The five horse is that a fact at nine to five, the second favorite, five to one on St. Leisure winner, interest in times ahead in the eight box. And number nine, Banadura, the Oaks winner, closing out the Da Costa Quartet at 33 to one. Philip Fiani's major danger is in post position 10 and at three to one as a third favorite. Heavy afternoon rain left the track sloppy. Let's get Bran Rickman's race call now. As they go tearing down the back stretch. As expected, Wall Street Trader has speed. There goes Banadura rushing down on the outside, and Banadura grabs it from a Wall Street Trader. Fun can't done right in behind them. Toward the outside, Major Danger is there. Norblar has improved a place. Is that a fact has faded back through the field ahead of Atlantic Convoy and further and beyond? And last of all, interesting times ahead as they make their way now toward the half mile and the turn for home. Banadura. Just a leader. Wall Street trader a length down and racing next. Fun Khan Dunn begins up. Big move on the outside. Major Danger is only four lengths off that lead. Further and beyond races up next with interesting times ahead as they go charging away now, leaving the three and come toward the 5 16th. It's Fun Khan Dunn who now assumes that lead. Wall Street trader left some three lengths back by coming into the top of the lane. And it is Fun Khan Dunn out in front from Wall Street trader. The rest all trying to close up further and beyond is racing up in the center but it is fun can done having them off their legs at the moment is that a fact now unleashed and asked to close the gap on his stable mate it is fun can done by two and a half lengths they are inside the final 16 fun can done hanging on is that a fact now beginning to close with every stride but fun can done wins the gold cup Halladine having switched from right hand whipping to the left in deep stretch does enough to fend off his stable mate is that a fact late closing effort First time aboard this cold fun count done in a race. Halladine lands his third gold cup after scores with Perfect Neighbor in 2015 and Will in Charge in 2018. And after being coddled late in last year's renewal, when looking like a winner at the eighth pole aboard Mahogany, Halladine knew this one was his. Leaving the two and a half, I know he had enough strength to go home. If I see him come beside him, I had extra. So I was pretty confident once I put him through. Jason Da Costa now the first trainer to repeat as Gold Cup winner since Spencer Chung scored in 2011 and 2012 with St. Cecilia. And the 39-year-old conceded that the Gold Cup winner jumped the gun actually as he had not been programmed fully for this event. Fun can done wasn't tightened 100% for this race because this race wasn't really the objective for him. It was the Jamaica Cup and then, and then the Motte Mile. So that's why he looked like he came back a, a little bit in the finish. Um, so I'm really happy that he got the job done. A third win in a row and seven lifetime wins now in only nine starts. Fun Can't Done captures the Philip Fiani Gold Cup and books his Mute Mile ticket with a score by three quarters of a length over Stablemate Is That a Fact in a 1 2 finish for trainer Da Costa and owner Carlton Watson. The winning time 1 minute 26.10, going seven furlongs. All the highlights of the weekend a winning appearance for the 1000 Guinness winner and Derby runner up Run Julie Run under champion jockey Ryan Lewis. Out for the first time since her narrow half-length loss to Crown Chaser in the early August derby. She pretty much went gate to wire for trainer Ian Passad in Saturday's restricted stake seventh race. 
The victory margin four and a half lengths as the one to two favorite. Second, the US bred impressive four suffering his first defeat at Caymanus Park. Run Julie Run's winning time for eight furlongs, 138.31 for owners Karen Passard and Henry Pratt. Sunday's main event was a vassal in the Jir Memorial Sprint over five and a half furlongs, serving up a gripping finish. The seven to one bet in money market with a healthy lead passing the eighth pole. But ex champion jockey Dane Dawkins, fresh from his top 10 finish at the Cineboya Downs Jockeys Championship in Canada, rouses the five year old gelding Perfect Brew to a well timed victory. Dawkins on his third win since returning home from Winnipeg. Perfect Brew's first win this in five starts this year for trainer Richie Azan. Winning the five and a half furlong Bass in the Deer Memorial by three quarters of a length in 106.94. Meanwhile, the race for the Jockeys Championship remains really lively. Terrific Tevin Foster with a Saturday four timer among five weekend wins keeps a narrow lead over Radish Roman, aka the Sneaky Fox, who had four wins. With 104 victories, Foster ends the weekend just one in front of Roman, with Halladine third on 50 wins. Both Foster and Roman now surpassing the 100 mark, the first time more than one rider achieves over 100 wins in a Caymanus Park season since 2013, when Dane Nelson with 117 wins topped Omar Walker 107 for the title. To Central Downs in Canada now, where top Jamaican Dane Nelson is the defending champion rider. And two weeks into the new season, he has opened his stakes winning account. Aboard the 2-1 to one bet, it's all good man in the $50,000 CTHS sales stakes for three-year-old Colts and Geldings over seven furlongs. Nelson kicked clear of the field mid-race en route to a commanding victory. It's all good, man. Brody's pal, the only one with a shot at him. He is second. He's got about four lengths to make up. Patriotic Freedom well back in third. Way back to Lucky Force into the stretch. It's all good, man, by five. Brody's pal working hard, but is not going to reach. It's all good, man. They don't get him today. He wins the CTHS sales stake. Second year in a row, the 40-year-old Nelson and It's All Good Man are CTHS sales stakes winners. It's All Good Man has never lost a race at Sentry Downs and scores here by three and a quarter lengths, chased by Brody's pal at 7-1 to one, with Barbadian jock Gerald Beckles aboard. The winning time, 124.09 seconds for reigning champion trainer Gonzalo Anderson. And finally, Europe's richest horse race at 5 million euros, that's just under 5.5 million US dollars, is the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe in Paris, France. And Sunday's 2024 renewal was a thriller. The 10 to 3 bet Sosi in the hunt in the run to the finish of the mile and a half trip on the turf course at the Longchamp race course. But watch jockey Ross Aran in the pink cap, accelerating to the front aboard the four year old filly, Blue Stocking. Let's find out if this is. A winning run. Blue Stocking has taken it up. The five-year-old Philly Blue Stocking goes into the lead. Sozy, it's a repeat now of the uh, from last time out. The uh, Vivre May Aventure coming to chase Blue Stocking. Los Angeles and Sozy behind these. But Blue Stocking is in front with Ross Ryan and she's won the Arc de Triomphe. Not an unfamiliar sight of Philly winning the Arc. Found in 2016. Since that, enabled twice and Alpinista. All arc winning fillers in the last 10 years. This one really special though for jockey Ryan and trainer Ralph Beckett, both celebrating their first win in the event. A record seventh pre to lock the triumph win for owners Judmont Farms Limited. Blue Stocking wins by a length and a quarter ahead of Avanture. Blue Stocking stopping the clock at 231.58 for the 12 for a long run. And as the arc is a Breeders' Cup Day win and you're in event, Blue Stocking now has an automatic berth to the November 2 Breeders' Cup turf at Del Mar in California. Our weekly tally of Caribbean wins in the USA and Canada now before we go. In the past week, since our last show, I've counted 71 victories. Among them, the Barbadian trainer Sappy Joseph Jr. with five wins at Gulfstream Park, including a Saturday triple. Five wins as well for the Barbadian jockey Rocco Boyne at Thistledown, where he's about to be formally crowned champion jockey. At Woodbine, three wins each for the Barbadian jockeys Kevin Nichols and Patrick Husbands, who had a stakes win in the Stewards' Room. TNT champion jockey Brand Boudram Singh had three wins at Hastings. Three wins as well for the Jamaican jockey Kieran McGregor at Grants Pass, and ex-Jamaica champion Trevor Simpson had four wins at Lethbridge. We've been at the track covering top stories and exciting races in the sport of kings. Check us out again next week.